flights. Israeli Prime Minister dissolves war cabinet after key departures. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total to around maintenance of the Edinburgh State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Details of the news, I am Priska Wanko. The Edinburgh State Government and her development partners are commenced to their workshop where they will design a strategic work plan for an effective, efficient and robust creative economy in the state. The event tagged Edinburgh State Creative Economy Consultative Value Chain Mapping has ended in Orca. Eight representatives of ministries, departments and agencies discussing how to map the various sectors in the creative economy, such as film and video, fashion design and modeling, music production and distribution, and content creation. Correspondent Chibuzo Ubidike reports. Declaring the conference open, the Commissioner for Culture, Tourism and Entertainment, Mr. Don Onyeji, stated that the conference will help the state government assist all sectors strategically to fully tap each of their potentials. According to Mr. Onyeji, the event attended by participants from government and the private sector under one roof will establish the backgrounds, engagement and take decisions on the expectations of the government to ensure that creative sector in Anambra is fully mapped. He appreciated the partnership with Technology for Social Change and Development, Tech for Deaf, and assured of the continued partnership of the state government to ensure full implementation of communicate realized from the conference. Is to establish the background, the foundation for engagement. So today we have uh, taken decisions on what we think government should do to ensure that the creative sector in Anambra State across board are mapped out and the role of government and the role of the private sector and all of that. For the senior researcher and policy manager at Tech for Deaf, Mr. Emmanuel Umukoro, their vision was to equip Africans with skills that foster economic prosperity, financial freedom, and sustainable development in the area of digital technology. Mr. Umukoro explained that it is their mandate to ensure that while they build the capacity of people to use technology to better their lives, they will also ensure that right policies are in place for the businesses to thrive and described Anambra as hub for creativity, saying that the state is ready for more investments to strengthen the creative economy. While in paper presentation, the research policy lead tech for them is Victoria Oletu said that the agency seeks to create opportunities and platforms for people to assess this work and entrepreneurship through digital skills empowerment. She pointed out that the creative economy is an important sector of the economy and as such there is need for broad-based research to understand its benefits to youths and women and its challenges in order to better position the state to take advantage of the evolving sector. What we do is a lot of capacity building intervention, uh, policy intervention, we do advocacy, we do research. So essentially our work is to make economic opportunities are available to Africans and for us to be able to do that we build capacity for people using in the area of digital technology, right, um, digital skills. The participants we are during the conference group into teams where they are expected to identify factors, solutions, mitigating against capacity building and talent development, infrastructure, technology, funding, and institutive and internal NDA collaboration in the state, and preparing ground for a fruitful engagement with private sector in Oka, Chibu Zobidike, ABS News. The Anambra State Commissioner of Police, Mr. Nahe Obono Item, has condemned the morning attack at the Obaro local government headquarters secretariat by armed arsonists, describing it as an act of cowardice. The attack, according to the police, resulted in the destruction of four patrol vehicles belonging to the vigilantes, although there were no casualties. A statement issued by the police public relations officer, S.P. Thurchuku Ikinga, 
explained that preliminary information indicates that the assailants arriving in large numbers of motorcycles and a vehicle began shooting indiscriminately. However, they faced a strong resistance from the vigilante operators until the police response team arrived. Due to the superior firepower of the security operators, the gunmen fled the scene after four operational vehicles of the security operators were unfortunately engulfed in flames and severely damaged. The statement for the states that a response to the incident, the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations led a joint security force comprising the Army, Navy and other security agencies to the scene for an on-the-spot assessment, adding that ongoing onslaught operations are being carried out to apprehend the culprits. The Commissioner of Police, while commending the security operators for their bravery, assure the public of continued and strengthened collaboration in the fight against criminal elements in the state. As part of this continuous advocacy for a better welfare for elderly persons, the Alzheimer's Disease Foundation ADF has stated its commitment to end all forms of abuse of elderly persons in Anambra State. The non-governmental organization gave the assurance during an event it organized to mark the World Ever Abuse Awareness Day in Amobia, Okasa, local government area. Chibuzo Obidike takes the story from here. The town hall began with a roadwalk by the elderly persons who came out in their numbers to raise awareness on the various forms of abuse, maltreatment and neglect elderly people pass through on a daily basis. During the event, the foundation honored the deputy speaker of Anambra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Chufu Bukoye, and the managing director of Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sachido Obidiogu, for their tireless commitment to the welfare of the elderly and efforts to uphold their dignity through social change. Speaking at the event, Right Honorable Okoye appreciated ADF for their contribution to the welfare of the senior citizens and assured that the State House of Assembly will partner her foundation geared towards making laws to improve the living conditions of the aged in the state. <laughs> The prevalence of elder abuse in all its many forms is an issue that falls across borders, cultures and economies. It is a silent epidemic that we must confront with unwavering commitment and compassion. In our society today, um, yes, when it comes to interest in letter, the elderly, and I believe that is why our governor, Mr. Governor, Professor Charles Berugo, you were, well, think that of something, go where now wrong, and all inclusive government, everyone, and the special model. For the elderly, I am a woman, a such for the elderly in our society. On our road and all inclusive administration. Educating the people on some health tips of the elderly people, the chairman of the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Anambra State Chapter, Dr. Irene Okeke, and a volunteer doctor in ADF, Dr. Ozodim Machidi Okereke, revealed that elderly people are exposed to abuses and denied proper medical attention because of the lack of care from families and society, and called on people to bring their elderly parents or relatives to ADF for checkup every Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as the foundation has certified doctors that will attend to them professionally responding on behalf of the elderly chiefs Mike Akubude from Amobia and Nwabeze Ume Yakabogu from Enugu who appreciated the founder ADF for their attention, love and commitment towards them. Vice principals in Anambra State Secondary Schools have been charged to live up to their responsibilities. The Chairman, Post Primary School Service Commission, PPSSC, Professor Nkechi Ikediwu, gave the charge addressing vice principals at a one day capacity building workshop organized for them at Capitol Secondary School, Oka. 
The workshop had in attendance board members of PPSSC, Secretary of the Commission, Mrs. Benedine Anago, as well as vice principals from the six educational zones in the state. The essence of the workshop was to look at the duties of their vice principals, their supportive roles, and their roles in supervision. Professor E.K. Dugu stressed that in secondary schools, there are vice principal academics, vice principal administration, and vice principal general duties. Though their responsibilities vary, they have similar duties to perform in the school. She listed some of their duties to include assisting the principal as second in command in decision making, making students disciplined, supporting the teachers, working with the principals to reach out to parents and staff to ensure effective communication, standing in for the principal in his or her absence, as well as coordinating specific events like assemblies and orders. The PPSSC chairman told the vice principals to be role models of the way they speak and dress should never look hungry, ensuring that their speech and dressing connotes the office they occupy so as to attract students to the teaching profession. Professor E.K. Jugo also sang the school evaluation quality assurance department second for their passion, interest, and zeal in organizing the workshop and the resource persons for doing justice to their papers. The Archdeacon Achala Archdeaconry and Vigor of St. Nicholas Anglican Church Achala, Venerable Gilbert Wonko, has challenged Christian fathers to skew all forms of immorality and, and embrace righteousness for a better society. Venerable Wonko stated this in a sermon to Mac Fathers Sunday of the church, noted the fathers should, as a matter of urgency, go back to the drawing board and tackle with the menace in today's society, which he noted that many of them are as a result of bad parenting. Religion correspondent Amaka Chibuzokoye completes their story. To relinquish their responsibilities to the wives and reminded them that God made them the head of the family so as to cater, nurture, mold, and raise up responsible children who will tow their parts for a greater height. He further laid emphasis on love, lamenting the increase in divorce in today's society asking fathers to hold on to their first love and look inwards whenever challenges emanate so as to solve them. Fathers are to lead in their families. They are to lead in prayers and in the provision of amenities for their families. And so relinquishing their responsibility means that the, the family may be disorganized and the leadership may be questionable. The children may no longer know who is in charge. Contributing a member of Christian Fathers Fellowship in the church, Chief Peter Anne, urged fathers to pay attention to their primary duties and assure that we should affect their families negatively. <laughs> On his part, the chairman of 2024 Father's Sunday Planning Committee, Mr. Ogochufu Nahue, thanked God for the gift of fatherhood, which he described as a vocation, calling on young fathers to be committed to the things of God as it will help them to carry on with the responsibilities of fatherhood. All my only young fathers are fatherly committed to the things of God. The fatherly committed to the things of God. From St. Nicholas Achala, Amaka Chibuzo Okoye, ABS News. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has threatened to wield the big stick against airlines flying into restricted areas of the country. The Aviation Authority stated this after I received a letter from the Office of the National Security Advisor reporting a sighting of an unknown aircraft flying over the presidential villa. As a result, the NCCA warned airline operators in Nigeria through a letter sent to them. The letter stated that the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority wishes to refer to Part 8.8.1.21 of NIGECAS, which states that no person must operate an aircraft in a prohibited or in a restricted area, the particulars of which have been duly published. The letter further stated that such violations shall be liable to sanction, noting that intruding aircraft may risk be met with dire consequences. 
The authority in the letter stated that all aircraft owners and operators should advise their crew to obtain true weather before the flight and adhere strictly to air traffic control instructions to avoid flying into restricted or prohibited areas. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dissolved a six-member war cabinet just a week after the departure of centuries opposition leader Benny Gantz and his ally Gadi Eisenkort. Israel said that sensitive issues about the war with Hamas in Gaza will now be discussed in a smaller forum. The report stated that Mr. Netanyahu had faced demands from far-right ministers in his governing coalition to join the war cabinet, which could have further strained ties with the U.S. and other international allies. A spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces said that as far as they were concerned, it would not affect the chain of command. Mr. Gantz and Mr. Eason Court quit over the Prime Minister's leadership, including the lack of a plan for post-conflict Gaza. The two former military chiefs had joined the National Unity Government with Mr. Netanyahu's right-wing coalition days after the start of the war in October. According to the report, some of the issues previously discussed by the War Cabinet will be transferred for discussion in the Security Cabinet, which includes the far-right National Security and the Finance Ministers, Itama Benjiver and Bezalel Smoturich. It was a celebration of a life well spent as the remains of late Mrs. Janet Azonu Ulisa was laid to rest in her husband's compound at Umumre village, Nene, in an orchard local government area. The late Mrs. Ulisa, who died at the age of 76, was a devout or Christian. Chukwe Mekha Mordelim reports. Mrs. Ulisa started with a burial mass at St. Mary's Catholic Church, Nene, where the parish choir sang for the peaceful repose of her soul through requiem songs. In a homily, the parish priest, Reverend Father Henry Ezobi, described death of a Christian as a necessary end that must happen when God wants it, and charged Christians to be upright in all their undertakings so that they will not die unprepared and end up in damnation. Reverend Father Ezobi said that testimonies about the disease show that she dedicated most of her time on earth to the things of God and thanked God for the lives she impacted positively. We must live a righteous life. We must be doing things as God wants it. Because one day you will leave the earth. So I always have to enjoy people to live a better life, loving each other, respecting each other. Speaking on behalf of the family of the deceased, her first son, Mr. Chukwemeka Ulisa, described her as a vicious woman who had everything he wants in a mother and prayed God to grant her eternal rest in his kingdom. On her part, the fourth child of the late Mrs. Olisa, Mrs. Teresa Atodialo, described her mother as an Amazon who raised them in fear of God and promised to emulate her footsteps to keep her legacy alive. For the children, she's our solution ground. There is nothing you bring to her that will have a solution. But this is the most painful aspect. That's the thing I'm going to miss about her. May he grant her eternal rest in his bosom. The son-in-law of the late Mrs. Olisa, Sir Victor Atodialo, expressed gratitude to God for the exemplary life she lived on earth and for being a good mother-in-law to him. The burial ceremony of late Mrs. Olisa climaxed with interment and the performances by her relations. From Neni Chukwe Meka Mordelem, ABS News. Member of the UK for the news and programs on ABS and many part of the world by liking our Facebook page, it's Adam Brown Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash ABS Television Orca and follow on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also follow us on X, formerly Twitter, at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this morning, a recap of the main points. An abrasted government has held capacity building for creative industry in Orca. 
Anambra Police Commissioner has reassured of collaboration in crime fighting. Nigeria Aviation Authority has warned the airlines against illegal flights. Israeli Prime Minister has dissolved war cabinet after key departures. To end the news, here is the special message again. Governor Chukwumas, the leader, has come for a total to around maintenance of the Anam Breasted economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that ends the news at 7 at this time on ABS Television. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Wangpo. Good morning.